Hey guys, I'm back. Um, this is an unexpected video. I was not expecting this box today right now. So number one, I apologize. There's a dishwasher going in the background. I hope the sound's not too distracting. Um, also, uh, this is not the video I intended to put up today. So I apologize to my Patreon guys for not, you know, giving you an advanced view today. There'll be videos for you guys for your advanced stuff up later tonight. Um, I was up super late last night, not because of the game, but because of the stuff that happened after the game and There'll be a video about that. But anyway, never enough tactical has gotten here. New box, different box, so that's cool. Um, we'll get into this. I wanna do some shout outs though before we start this cause I haven't done shout outs in a little bit. I'm forgetful, that's what it comes down to. Um, I wanna do something a little different with the shout outs. So normally, you know, I don't really um, do shout, I do shout outs to people and viewers. I don't do shout outs to channels, but there are some channels that I particularly enjoy and I want to, you know, I've been checking them out and I wanna, I wanna put them out there because I think they're good folks making good content. So number one, Patty's Potato Peelers. If you wanna watch a really down to earth dude with a sweet, awesome accent, look at some cool knives, um, check out Patty's Potato Peelers. Um, I mean to shout out Woodland Warriors for some awesome gear reviews and I, I just keep forgetting all the time. Woodland Warriors, great channel. These are all channels I'm subscribed to, by the way. White Mountain Gear Reviews by Lee Lanning. Um, getting ready to put out some really awesome, um, like big ticket item, like like $200 flashlight reviews. Can't wait to see how they come out. Like really good stuff, Olight and stuff. So um, that's something you might want to check out. And then something new that, you know, they just kind of uh, commented on a video, so I checked them out. And, you know, I wouldn't just throw a shout out there for a channel without checking out some of what they got going on, but I like where they're going and I think they've got good potential. Tech and Tactical YT. I'm assuming the YT is for YouTube. Something you might want to check out. I'll put all of their their names, uh, you know, in the comment section so you can you can check them out if you feel like it. Guys, I am editing this in from the end of the video. Um, how could I forget Video Addict? One of the most entertaining guys that really I love watching him. He's so mellow um, yet exciting at the same time. Great channel. Love Video Addict. But as I always say, a channel would be nothing at all without uh, viewers. So let me do some shout outs to some actual viewers. Sam is walking around in a furry panda onesie and she refuses to get on video wearing it and it's really upsetting me. But so the seven screaming goats of America, which might be the very best name I've ever seen ever, ever, ever. Gray Graham, hi, hi, two highs, hi, hi. T. Wilson, the kazoo, Race Kelly and Randall Marquez. So shout outs to you guys today. Thanks for supporting the channel, watching videos, commenting, taking part in the discussion, subscribing and everything else that helps make this channel a channel and not just a glorified online video album. So uh, thanks guys, really appreciate it. And I'll get to more shout outs in future upcoming videos. So never enough tactical. Um, by the way, after this video, I don't want to delay opening the box anymore. We'll take out the big cool map that Derek sent and we'll see what we have scratched off so far. So never enough tactical for February 2018. Kind of funny story. Um, when I, I didn't update the right billing information with new cards and they've got kind of a crazy cycle. So I updated thinking I was going to get February's, I mean January's, and I didn't get January's because of the way their cycle works. So I got February. So I missed one. By the way, for those of you who are going to ask, I've been carrying the uh, the Kubi Premium folder around lately and taking some of the comments and suggestions into account. Uh, now, this is the advanced drop. So, <coughs> I'm going to move the box out of full frame because people wanted me to uh, said maybe it would be better if we did that. Let's just take some items out and go one by one. Already we've got two knives here. Two knives by not my favorite manufacturers, but we'll give them a chance. Mm. So never enough tactical. What do you guys think? Should we go for the knives first? Should we just should we just go? We'll go in order, I guess. So first of all, let's look. Advanced supply drop. So the retail cost, the retail value of all this, they're giving us suggested manufacturers retail price. Big air quotes there. $257.94. I can't remember exactly how much you paid for the box. I'll have to put it in text over there somewhere. Um, so let's, yeah, let's go in order. So knife roll by Modern Made Man. 
So the knife roll looks like it is a storage slash carrying case for your folder type knives. Right? And then you can roll it up for traveling. Actually, it's, you know what? It's not a bad item for traveling. Because, well, I almost pulled that right out, didn't I? Um, <clears throat> when I'm traveling, when I was traveling military-wise, I'd usually like to take more than one knife. This is a great way to do it. And here's what I like about it. So TSA, who knows what they're gonna go through and what they're not gonna go through, right? So something like this, what I'm used to doing is, is hiding my like expensive knives in a sock and then putting it in a boot or a shoe. Um, because it's not illegal to travel with them, but I don't want them rolling around, I don't want them getting lost, I don't want anybody in the TSA, you know, going through stuff and stealing them, and what are the chances they're gonna unroll a sock that's in a shoe? Unless somebody in the TSA is watching my video and now they know my secret. But this would be good because you could put all your eggs in one basket, I guess, roll it up, and then stick this in a boot or a shoe instead of the sock. Or you could just put this in as an item. In any case, it does keep them protected. Um, I've seen larger cases than this. Some of the larger cases, though, and I have one, which is what all my hinderers were in when they went missing. Um, it has more padding and everything, but, I mean, I guess really the padding you don't really need. It's pretty strong nylon. It's got a little bit of a waterproof coating to it. The stitching cream seems pretty secure. Um, and then there's a little bit of elastic give in these pouches, so. One, two, three, four, five. So this lets you carry five all at once. And what do they say the MSP, MSRP on this is? $42. I don't know. I think we could probably find something for cheaper than that. Modern Made Man is not a manufacturer I'm familiar with, though. This is a pretty simple product, though. I, I don't know, you know, what more complicated stuff they make. But the truth is, this is functional. It has a good use. It's no frills. I, I still think it's overpriced. I think that... Um, with a good sewing machine and some skills, you can make this item much cheaper. Not that I would want to spend the time doing it. I think we could probably, if we searched, find something similar for a little cheaper, but I like the item. I mean, it's it's a good it's a good product, especially if you're going to be traveling around and you have some, like, you know, this. I wouldn't want the anodized finish on this to get all scratched up, banging into a bunch of other stuff. So that's not bad. Although some people like that. Some people like the used and character abused look on their knives, so I don't know, but... Um, we'll put this in the like it pile. It's useful. It's not overly fancy. Um, again, probably find it for a lower price, but cool. We're going to put this one in the like it pile. What is next? Survival kit by Live Fire. So let's see. Live Fire, we've already decided in a previous video, Live Fire is a damn good fire starter. <clears throat> um, Live Fire works. And this is a whole little kit. And the MSRP on this is $12.98, which, uh, again, we probably could find it for cheaper than this. But for a product like this that I know works, for a product that I know is effective, I'm willing to pay the 13 bucks for this. Um, if I didn't have the supplies already to put this in a, in a bag, in a kit, um, I think DJ had this exact tinderbox in his... I'm going to pronounce it wrong, uh, uh, Jakari Puko knife in the um, custom sheath. And side note, uh, all the packages that were supposed to go out today went out today. Again, I don't, I don't know. There's uh, 15 packages that went out today. So the first 15 are out today. I, I couldn't tell you who they are, 15 plus the Patreon guys. Um, this stuff is... Mmm, smells good. Smells piney. This stuff is really effective fire starting tinder. Um, I will vouch for the Live Fire brand because I have used it. It works really, really well. Um, I'm not sure about the ferro rod here, but I haven't had too many ferro rods that don't actually work. It's just some work a little bit better than others. But this one comes with uh, its own little striker, and I like these little serrated ones. They seem to work really, really well to strike to scrape that initial coating off and get it going. And to be honest, I don't want to go outside right now. It's it's super cold out. We had a little ice storm last night. Um, <clears throat> schools were delayed for two hours today and everything here. But this is cool. Um, and I just started kind of reorganizing all my stuff. I have a whole little drawer set with just fire starting things, which is probably a horrible fire hazard, but it keeps it all nicely organized. and. 
this might find its way into a future giveaway if I don't need it for another kit, which I don't think I do right now, but still pretty good. I mean, this is this is a quality item, so this is going in the life pile. Oh, here it is. So we do have a live fire 40% off promo code. Um, I like the live fire brand. Good stuff. So live fire, two items in the like it. Generally, I like Never Enough Tactical. Um, they've had some hit or miss items, but not bad. Fire Cord by Live Fire. Um, now this is, you know, I can't decide how I like this. So MSRP on this is also twelve ninety eight. So five fifty cord that's designed um, to burn. I, I'm not sure how I feel about this. Yeah, you know, at first I, my first impression of this stuff was, well, that's cool, that's convenient. And I got um, some zipper pulls, uh, with little toggles on the end that were, I thought were really cool. And then somebody commented, they're like, yeah, that's what you want, to wear flammable items on you. And I, it started me thinking, and I was like, yeah, that is, that is kind of a thing. Um, and especially this ACU type pattern, I have regular 550 cord in this same pattern. And what if I were to confuse the two? So while I recognize that, yeah, it's, it's cool that, you know, it, it's like the, um, what is it, Survivor Cord, which has all the, the, the extra fancy stuff. It, it gives you an extra element to your 550 cord, but I, I just don't know, I'd be afraid, at least the Survivor Cord, it's more, it just has that one flammable element in it. I mean, this is like the fire cord is, is made to burn, um, which is good. I mean, it's got its uses, but I really wouldn't want to mistake this for regular 550 cord. Sorry about kicking the camera there. Um, I'd be a little nervous about mixing it up or, or you know, accidentally putting this near some flame because it is a, a fire starting item. What we're going to have to do is actually, I'm going to have to test this stuff. We're actually going to have to do a test of this. So there's going to be a separate video just on this with some fire starting things and see exactly what it takes to get fire cord to burn. Now, it, it should be noted, by the way, I, I'm sorry, I'm walking around acting like the whole thing burst into flames. It's got an extra inner, inner strand that's flammable. Um, it's not like the whole thing just burst into flames, but, you know, nylon melts. A flame could melt it. It could get to it, and, it, and it, you know, it's just one of the things that I consider. And while it's not as expensive as a survivor cord, why not carry the survivor cord? And it does, I gotta tell you, it has a very flammable, it doesn't smell like regular nylon to me. You can smell the flammableness, so, but we're definitely gonna test this. Um, right now though, and some of you guys might disagree with me, I'm putting it in the meh pile. Great concept, love the concept. I don't know how I feel about this in practical circumstances. Um, I don't know, but then again, I like Survivor Cord, so I don't know, maybe I'm being a hypocrite. Um, I just, I'm not sure, I wanna test it out. I definitely, want, I, I've messed with real Survivor Cord. I know how that works. I wanna test this out, and especially, Twelve ninety eight for this small little amount. I don't know exactly how much this is, but uh, you know, Survivor Cord is pretty expensive. This is pretty expensive. I want to know I'm getting my money's worth. Again, if I'm going to throw down money for fancy five fifty cord, the Survivor Cord offers me more for the added price. It's just that's my two cents. That's all, guys. Uh, maybe some of you who have real life experience with this, you can you can chime in in the comments. But that's just for now. That's all. All right, we've spent enough time on this five fifty cord. Let's move on. So next we have The Spirit by SOG with an MSRP of $39.99. Um, it's sleek aerodynamic, it hides a secret. Let's see. So this is our first blade. It's big. It's heavy. Balanced for throwing. Too bad I throw like an idiot. My dad tried to teach me how to throw once. He's pretty good. In ranger school they taught him how to throw tomahawks and such. Um, and you know, every bladed weapon you can imagine. Uh, me having not been a graduate of it. I don't know. Oh good, here's specs right there. Thank you for saving me from having to put everything uh, in text, look at that. So it's 420, not even 420HC, <clears throat> 420RC, but there we go. Wait, didn't it look way bigger in the package just now? You know what, I think that, that is deceptive. Um, I have mail for you. It looked way bigger in the package though. It is sticky and it is gooey and greasy. Hang on a sec. Okay, we are back. Um, so, balanced for throwing, as they said. Um, it is definitely daggerish. So you can see that it basically has a sharpened swedge on one side, not 
a full two sharpened, you know, blades. Um, that's an interesting choice for something that is convertible to a spear. Um, now, I guess this accepts a standard broom handle, and if I had a broom handle available, I would try it out. Look what I found in the shed. Well, there you go. Uh, I now have a throwing spear. So yeah, it does accept a standard broom handle on it, which is cool. And, you know, I guess if you don't have a standard broom handle, you can just fashion yourself a pointy stick out in the woods and lash it in any other way that you want. So pretty cool that it does that. Um, why are they making the assumption, though, that you're going to have a broom handle out in the woods somewhere? You know, I don't normally travel in any, you know, there's not a broom in my go bag. I don't have a broom handle sitting in my vehicle. Uh, I didn't normally deploy with, with a broom handle. I mean, we had brooms when we deployed for sweeping out tents, but they were big, heavy brooms. They wouldn't fit this. But the weight is not bad. Um, balance is good. I mean, it's for throwing. I guess we should test that little edge, huh? Hmm. There we go. Nice edge. Um, I don't want to cut up the fire cord right now because I want to use it for testing later. I don't have any actual P-cord, but did some nice paper slicing. I guess we could do this. Not bad. Little, little painful for the shaving, but it shaves. Um, and... It has its own little sheet. So I guess you could, in a pinch, look like if this is what you got and you're out there in the wilderness somewhere, this would make a knife. You could use it. It's actually not as awkward as you would think to use this as a blade. The weight, again, is pretty good. Um, because it's not fully sharpened, you could use this for kind of fine work if you needed to. You could choke up a little bit. Now, you are risking poking yourself right there, but... It's more useful than it looks on the surface. Um, I just, the thing is, I'm not into the dagger shaped sort of blades, and I'm going to piss some people off here. Um, I think the price is good for this. They're not overcharging you. Sods, typically in my, in my experience, have been pretty overpriced. 40 bucks is pretty reasonable for a blade of this size with this name on it. Um, I could see that. That story, if I was into this, um, sheath leaves a lot to be desired, but simple sheath. I'm putting it in the map pile, though, and I know a lot of you guys are going to disagree with me. It just doesn't have, it's not my style, it's not my thing, and again, when I do these unboxings, I, you know, sometimes I'm commenting on the quality of the product, and if I am, I'll tell you. This is 100% my opinion. It's just, it's not my thing. It's not something I'm prone to carry. Um, and, you know, when we're talking about the value of what's in a box, a lot of it comes down to, am I going to get use out of it? I'm probably not going to get a lot of use out of this thing, unfortunately. Um, I'm doing, a, a, at a viewer's request, a whole review and test of my favorite fixed blade knife in the whole world, the Ontario Army Air Force Survival Knife. Um, it's probably going to be up sometime this week or next week. You know, that to me is almost a perfect knife. This, mm, in its niche, it's it's got great functionality, but leaves a lot to be desired as a knife knife to me. Anyway, so that's the basic supply drop with a total MSRP of $107.95. Again, you know, I think that you can find this stuff probably cheaper if you shop around. Um, I, I'm not so sure 100%, but it usually is the case. We can find this stuff cheaper. We ended up in the basic drop with two items in the like it, two in the meh, none in the don't like it, though. So that's cool. Rarely, you know, do you find a box of nothing in the don't like it pile. So, uh, you know, winning there. In the advanced supply drop, <coughs> there's only one item. The Talwar Serrated Knife by Cold Steel. Cold Steel has a habit of putting this very, very aggressive serrations on their knives. And I'll tell you right now, and I've been talking to people in comments on other videos, I don't like serrations on knives. Um, I think that they have a, a very specific use, but in general, they're not very good for EDC. And... Um, Whatever, but now they say the MSRP on this is $149.99. Cold Steel is another brand that I think greatly overestimates the value of their own products. I'm not a huge Cold Steel fan, but let's let's go into this. 
this actually feels better than a lot of cold steels I've had in this kind of configuration. So we're dealing with G10, not plastic, which is cool. I like that. It's a very different feel. And if you felt it, you know what I mean. Um, comes with an extra clip. Oh, I guess if you want to switch it to uh, left hand, so that's cool. There is no tip up, tip down option. It is just tip up only. That works just fine for me. You tip down fans. Might have a problem with that. Nice work on the backspacer. Fit and finish, just looking over it. Perfect. Nothing sticks out, no problems. It's a lock back, which a lot of cold steels are. Not my fave. In the neighborhood of a thumb disc, like a thumb wedge here, um, but interesting. Weight feels good. Um, actually feels a little lighter than it looks, believe it or not. And of course, I'll have to put all the specs, unless they put it on the box. No, so I'll have to put all the specs on there for you. Um, I guess we should get this bad boy open, huh? Yeah, and there's that super aggressive cold steel serrations. Now that, to me, right there, kind of kills the blade for EDC for me. I don't even like to cut 550 cord with this rate of blade. Um, I think it frays the ends and it gives you a very messy cut. Like I said, there's not a lot I think you need a serrated blade for that you can't do with a straight blade. I prefer straight, you know, fine edges just because of the, the cleaner quality of the cut that you get. But it is really comfortable in the hand. The ergonomics on this are really, really great. That jimping, that's not really jimping. Um, it actually does allow you to get pretty good traction there. The way it curves in the hand is good. A little bit small for me, just a tiny bit, the way the, the clip is in there. And you know, I like that the clip doesn't come way out on the end there to like poke into the hand. It, it feels good. I'd prefer a slightly wider handle, but that's just me and my personal preferences. Um, overall, it's comfortable. And it's a nice satin finish on the blade. Uh, again, right now I'm not sure what it's made of, but you know, for $149.99, I would want a, a, a good quality steel. Does it say over here? Oh, it does. Oh, that is a good steel. Okay. That's some um, uh, pretty good steel. It's going to require a little bit of care, but made in Taiwan, not exactly China, not exactly the United States, like the good China, the friendly China, not the enemy China. Um, <clears throat> Let's see, how are we on the lock back? You could one hand this if you wanted. Pretty smooth action. Any wobbliness? Nope. Everything's nice and tight. Now I could do a paper test for this. Let's see how it does. Oh my gosh. Well, oh man, was that just a fluke? Tell me that wasn't just a fluke. Did you just catch it in just the right way? So if you if you get it in between serrations, that I swear it feels like it's not cutting anything. It feels like it's just going through the air. You gotta get it right in between the serrations though. If you get one of these areas, it's not gonna cut very well. If you get it right there, it's like slicing nothing. That's beautiful. Um, I you know what? I might give this a, a, a more of a chance. I might actually put this in the pocket for a while. That's, that's pretty nice. I could be a fan of this knife. Um, Cold Steel, again, not a brand I'm really big on. Serrated knives, not really big on, but this feels good. It comes finished beautifully. Um, great steel on the blade, and so I think that kind of justifies a bit of the extra price tag on it. Sam's walking around in my boots, in my Air Force boots, Air Force boots, and a fuzzy panda costume. Won't get on camera. Let's see if it fits in our knife roll nicely. Because this is a rather large, you know, it's a four inch blade. Oh, it fits pretty good. We can put our little kubi in there. And even with the big curve on it, it's still, yeah, this is a pretty nifty little on the go if you want to travel a little bit of your collection. I like it. It's not bad. So, overall, not a bad box. Um, I'm putting this knife, believe it or not, a cold steel knife for the first time ever is going in the blanket pile. Yeah. All the cold steels I've had have had, you know, plastic handles and riveted construction and not great steel. Um, 
even with the crazy serrations, I, I like this knife. I'm really interested in giving it a try. Maybe doing the full review and, you know, quite getting back to just this knife. This is pretty good. And then there's one more thing in the box. Make Ready Video Learning Center. Um, it's a special offer. So, I guess it's learn how to fight, learn how to cook, and then go to the gym. Um, and I'm wondering if she has anything to do with the special offer. So, cool. Smaller box than we've been getting, but good quality items. I'd rather get a few good quality items than a big box full of junk. And these are some good quality items. So, let me put this back in the box and let me get our big map. And we'll take a look at where everybody is. Okay, guys, here's the update on the Derek map. We're doing pretty good. We got Mexico, we got Bolivia, we got Argentina, we got almost all 50 states. Um, actually, we got Saskatchewan today. We can mark that off. Um, we got Manitoba, we got British Columbia. Um, we need Ontario and Quebec, and then all this stuff to finish off Canada, Alaska, Saudi Arabia, <coughs> which is pretty cool. All of Australia, Nambia, South Africa. Well, we have updates to do on this map. I thought some more were done. Uh, I know I have friends right now watching um, deployed in Iraq and Afghanistan, so we're gonna mark them off. Um, I know there's some other areas in the Middle East that are undisclosed locations where we have folks right now that are watching. So we'll take them off, but we've got a lot of Europe going on, a lot of Central and Eastern Europe that's not done, but Romania, um, lots of folks with us, uh, Ireland, UK, Scotland, um, Iceland, I did by mistake, guys. We're, we have nobody there. But you India, I did. I because I I want I was this close this close to being stationed in Iceland way back when, and I, I still regret it. South Korea, so we're doing really cool on this map. This is one of the coolest things ever. Derek, thanks again. This is awesome. This is so much fun to do. Like every time there's a new area we can scratch off, I get so excited. So um, you know, keep reporting in with where you're from, with where you're at. So we can keep this map going. Um, that's just really exciting. Anyway, guys, um, I really appreciate you. You are all totally awesome. You are super fantastic. You are splendiferous. How's that? Anyway, I'll be back in real soon.